Chapter nine, what is the legal process that you're gonna face when you get a driving while under suspension charge? So first question, what should you expect? What should you expect when you're going to court for your driving while under suspension charge? The most important thing to remember with any charge, whether you've been charged with driving under suspension or another charge, is that you're actually presumed innocent. So it's the government's job. They need to prove that you're guilty. You do not need to prove that you're innocent. Now, to prove the charges against you, the government must go through a very specific and defined legal process. This legal process starts with what's called a first appearance. Brings up a question. How long does it take for my driving while under suspension charge to proceed against me in the courts? Now, the charges against you will take time to litigate. The, the legal process does not happen overnight. However, the courts, they actually can't take forever to prosecute the cases against you. So generally, and this is a general guideline, the courts have 18 months to bring the charges against you to trial. And if your case actually goes beyond the 18 month time period, it may be possible to get your charges withdrawn because you're right, covered by the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, to have your case heard within a reasonable period of time has been breached. Now, this is a constitutional argument. It's quite a complex argument, uh, and you should speak to a lawyer to figure out how to take that on. Brings up another question. What are the key court appearances that you're going to face during your legal process? So as your case proceeds through the court systems, through the court system in Ontario, you're going to face a series of court dates that are going to include the following. Something called first, which is your first appearance. This is the first time you appear before the court, it's not a trial. And you can learn more about the first appearance uh, in other videos that we've created. The second type of court date is something called the to be spoken to or set date appearances. Now the case against you is gonna take time. Uh, for example, your lawyer needs to get all the evidence, they need to prepare a defense, and so on. And the same is true of the prosecutor who's prosecuting the case against you. They need time to prepare the case against you. They need to respond to your lawyer, etc., etc. And the courts require updates to the process to ensure that your legal case is moving along. Uh, these court updates are heard in court, and these court updates are heard in court dates called to be spoken to dates or set appearance court dates. Now, another type of court appearance is called a judicial pretrial. In some cases, you may have a formal court date called the judicial pretrial. Uh, this date's effectively a resolution meeting between you and the prosecutor. If a lawyer represents you, uh, then that meeting will happen before a prosecutor and your lawyer. And at this meeting, all the issues surrounding your case will be discussed and potential resolutions will also be discussed. There's another date called a trial, which I'm sure you've heard of. A trial is where the charges against you will be heard in a courtroom in front of a justice of the peace. And in some cases, there's actually another court date for sentencing. So if you're found guilty or you enter a guilty plea, generally the justice of peace will immediately decide on the penalty. But in some cases, the justice of peace will decide on the penalty at a future court date at something called a sentencing, a sentencing date. Let's talk disclosure. So what is disclosure? And this is very important. Disclosure is all the evidence that the province will use against you as they try to convict you on your charge. Disclosure includes all the police officer notes, witness statements, uh, technical documents, including the notes regarding any devices or anything like that uh, that were involved in your case. So are you entitled to all this evidence? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, and it's one of the most important things you need to know is that the disclosure you get at your first appearance may not be complete. Okay, and it's critical to get complete disclosure to properly assess your case's strengths and weaknesses. And you do that in order to mount an effective defense. So you don't know what kind of fight you're against. So getting all the evidence against you so you can see the strengths, you can see the witnesses, and then you can know how you're going to fight the case against you. So make sure you get all the evidence. It's super important.